right, and we thank you for engaging us and our civilization in this unique interaction. As always, it is our pleasure to interact with you and all whom you represent of your human society. Without further ado, we would like to extend the following question to you. How are you doing this day of your time? Mm, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for coming, and uh, I was missing you. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Thank you. We are always here. Remember, when you're missing us, that is always, always, without exception, indication that you are receiving messages from us, but it is being filtered through a negative belief system that triggers the sensation of actually lacking or missing us or our presence not being there. Whenever you have that feeling, it is always representative of that connection. Great. So I know that from now on. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to ask, um, while I was aware that you are mm, communicating with me uh, at some points where I was not missing you, but I was communicating, um, mm, why would you say um, I shift to you from another um, being that I'm talking or that I'm receiving information from and then I shift to you and receive it from you. Yes, understand that because we are all individualized beings, you're going to have different interactions with each of us that will be more relevant for you at different times. So when you find you are wishing to engage with us or other aspects of our society, understanding that desire comes from a reflection of the relevance of each of these members of our society in relationship to what you're going through in the moment. So in other words, I myself in this way may have a particular message for you. So you will gravitate to what I have to offer and you will find that at other moments, other members of our society then have different messages for you that are more relevant than what I may have. And you'll naturally gravitate from member to member to member to receive whatever information is then the most relevant. I see. I see. I perceive in um, um, Daryl Anka's channeling that um, Bashar is actually like coming back, but while he's answering different questions, he's tuning into different energies and um, not only from your, from your society, but, but um, mm, and my connection is is very similar. I um, I feel like um, Gira is um, the speaker, but um, she often uh, includes in the energy that is speaking someone else that has um, perspective that that could um, enlighten enlighten the situation from the different point of view than, than just her. Yes, this is because again of her awareness of her multidimensional nature, being aware of all of her other incarnations, as well as the other beings that are telepathically linking themselves to the line of communication from her to you. Understanding that there are many beings that tune in to these conversations because they represent again the leading edge of consciousness in terms of communicating downstream from a future reality to a past reality to your reality of the age of transformation. Because it is such a hot topic issue, many beings will tune in. Many of these beings are specialists. Many of these beings are essentially pioneers of assistance of those societies that are going through transformation. So these beings will very naturally tune in to the conversation and then Yira will then engage these beings that are tuning in for their unique points of view, because they are essentially, again, specialists coming in to observe the consciousness transformation that is occurring. Yes, thank you. And now would you be able to give me more information about my connection, Gira, and how she relates to your civilization? All right. Well, understand that she represents what you understand to be mother energy, the idea of the divine mother in the sense of being able 
to hold space for beings, to go through their process, giving them exactly what they need in the moment to be able to, in many ways, transform their own issues in that very conversation with her. This is one of her specialties. She assists beings in being able to go to the root of whatever it is that they are dealing with in the moment that they are bringing to her attention. And she has that ability to share again what we call a motherly energy with the being and with their challenge in a way where they are feeling nurtured and supported to an, such an extent that they are then able to, in that same conversation, transform much of whatever it is they are bringing to the table. I see, I see. Yes. I know we were talking about her <laughs> no, when you say that. Okay, then. I'm wondering about um, my other connections in Sasani civilization. Can you tell me about more? All right, I will tell you about one in particular so you can begin to engage with it in a more conscious way. But understanding that you have a incarnational theme there where you are a member of a ship that is intimately working with what you understand to be one of the artificial intelligence systems in a way where you are dialoguing with this being, exchanging information with this being, and receiving different schematics, different maps, different blueprints for adjustments that you can make to the craft that you are on in addition to different coordinates, different maps, different locations of your universe. And this is a conversation you are continuously having with an artificial intelligence system in an Asasani incarnation. And the reason that this dialogue is so constant is because it is the role you are choosing to play in this incarnational theme. You are what is known as a machine master in the sense that you're able to interact with these machines in a unique way, using different aspects of your imagination that allows for you to receive very specific information from the technologies that you can then use to trade with other beings and that you also use personally in your own life. And you essentially take in different requests, different questions that many beings have about the universe and about themselves and you then present them to this machine, allowing for you and the machine to go into the issues, to go into the questions, to be able to extract more information and to create in that way archives, archives of similar questions with their corresponding answers. So you can essentially build a database for beings to then draw upon should they themselves be inquiring about such issues. Well, you, know, you just, Thank you. You just explained to me why am I doing many things that I'm doing the way that I'm doing them. <laughs> that well, makes well, sense. Thank you. Of course. Uh, apart from not judging the depth of my connection, <laughs> I would also want to deepen my connection. Sure. How do I deal with that conundrum? <laughs> All right, well, remember that the quality of your connection, again, depends, of course, upon your knowingness that you are always connected and that what comes out when you are channeling is exactly the way it needs to come out. To cherish this understanding is crucial. For through the validation of all of your previous channeling encounters, through knowing that they were exactly how they needed to go, it will lay the fertile soil for you to be able to then develop more refined energetic connections that can open up the ability to channel in a way that is much more automatic. And with a few rounds of practice, you could say, utilizing some of the different upgrades to the channeling state, you will find it can become second nature to you, where you are simply just watching yourself talking, not aware of what you're going to say next, but literally hanging on the edge of your seat as you are speaking the information. This Great. is a technique that was given to the channel today. He is currently employing this technique right now, and it is how he is able to remain in this flow state with us. And it is a very simple technique. It is something you can utilize, not just when vocally channeling, but whenever you want. We will explain some of the mechanics behind this technique 
and how you can use it for your benefit. Sure. Yes, please. Right. Understanding that the ears of your physical body have connection points located throughout their different canals that relate to every system in your body, be it a metabolic system, such as your lungs or your pancreas, or be it an anatomical structural system, such as your skeleton or your fingertips. The ears connect to all of these locations. The ears also, in many ways, help to balance the left and right hemispheres of the brain. And when the ears are actively engaged and their spiritual abilities are turned on, it can allow for you to very quickly enter into a flow state while you are vocally channeling and while you are going about your daily waking life. Understanding the technique to be quite simple, to go into the channeling state as you typically do, but allowing for your awareness to rest very gently upon the left and right ear during the channeling session. And what you will find is it is actually going to assist you in harmonizing your brain waves with the emanations, the vibrations that whatever being you are channeling is sending to you. And through a few rounds of practicing with this ear-based awareness, you will find that you go so in sync with their level of consciousness that you can allow for yourself again to literally just be sitting on the edge of your seat because you are literally watching them in real time, transmitting the energy that your brain is translating as words. And when you focus on the ears, this process becomes seemingly automatic. And all you really need to do is just remain focused. And it is engaging the listening state. And that is one of the reasons it is so powerful. The listening state is symbolic of, again, remaining open to receive whatever telepathic messages are coming to you. And once you are in that state, again, because the ears are balancing all of your physical body, that you are engaging your whole body through engaging the ears, in addition to balancing the left and right hemispheres of the brain electrically. Wonderful. So far, it's working great. I'm using it. <laughs> Thank you. You are quite welcome. For an added kick, for added stability and groundedness to connect the ear awareness, if you wish, to the breath and to the breathing and to the belly. Understanding the belly center to be one of the most sturdy, rooted, grounded points within your system. And when you connect the left and right ear to the belly awareness, it can allow for you to remain centered and grounded within the channeling state. Yes, it works. I know this question was sort of asked and answered many times, but uh, and, um, I will ask it anyway. Um, why is sometimes so easy for me to do something that I know how to do? You know, like a friend is um, telling me that his ear is um, somehow stuck. And I first tell him my intuition about it in sort of channeling state. And then I ask him if I can, that I could do something about it with him if he is willing to. And he's not believing it, but I'm already doing it, you know. And uh, at that moment, it, it is so powerful and I feel it and, and I, I can transform it or help him release the tension or whatever and, and give him advice while, while I'm doing it. And then I'm facing the similar thing with myself and I'm not able to, um, to do the same thing as strongly with myself. It's like I'm always like weak when I'm, I'm trying to help myself. Yes, and this is oftentimes reflective of the types of projections you send into those in your environment by saying this person is so deserving of love this person is so worthy i must help them 
oftentimes what's happening is there is a grandiose image of the perverted version of yourself being projected into other people. So when you look at this friend, when you look at the people in your life who you feel very fondly of, who you feel you cherish and love, understanding that that feeling of positivity that you have towards them is actually reflective of how strong your love for yourself could be if you allowed it to be that strong. Yes. So whenever you see, oh my goodness, my friend, I must help my friend, and you have that strong desire to help them, that strong desire to support them, remember, you are projecting the types of energies you wish to give to yourself onto the other person. And of course, this is a positive thing because you're doing it to help somebody, but you can also use it to help yourself by saying, how can I then use that amount of love, that amount of energy, that amount of generosity to then supplement and help my own journey, my own life? Yes, yes, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Thank you. Of course. I, I wanted to also ask about this time perception that you know, I have while channeling. Um, it seems contradictory to, no, not really, but sometimes, you know, because both, both things happen. Sometimes uh, I feel like it was much longer than it actually was and sometimes i feel it was shorter than it actually was um how does this happen and it has to do again with your internal state when you are in the channeling state sometimes there are moments where there are unpreferred belief systems that are running within the system that can make the channeling sessions seem a bit longer it can make them seem to drag on Sometimes this can be reflective of negative points of view being used while channeling. And this doesn't necessarily invalidate or take away from the quality of the information while channeling because this emotional state, this negative perspective is taking place within the more internal aspects of yourself while you're channeling, where there is essentially a barrier between that internal world and the quality of the information coming through. So what's happening is you are in the channeling state, you are allowing for this information to come through, but you are also getting the sense of something being a drag, so to say. And that is reflective again of certain belief systems alive within you that are being emphasized while you are channeling so you can use the channeling energy to then transform them. I see. When you are having the channeling experience where you are not feeling time, where it either feels incredibly short or you are literally not aware of how much time is passing, this is reflective of you being in a state of being where you have suspended enough of the negative beliefs that you have allowed for yourself to slip out of the awareness of time. And that allows for you to then better access our reality because we exist outside of time. We, of course, experience the effects of time slightly in the sense of our bodies aging. However, we are so outside of time that its effects on us are rather trivial and it allows for us to age quite gracefully and slowly. But you will find that the more you can suspend the awareness of time while you're in the channeling state, the more you are in resonance with our unique energies. And when you experience time passing slowly, it doesn't mean you're out of sync with us. What it does mean, however, is that there is something within you that you can transform to allow for that timeless quality to then return to your being. Yes, if I decide to transform that now, um, my approach would be um, change the interpretation of what is you know, going on and uh, I, would, I would interpret it then as more information coming in and that I have actually experienced the ages that I feel I'm experiencing and I'm still excited to experience them because and I, and I compress that experience into something that, that only takes 
10 minutes and feels like one hour. Could be. Yes, this is part of it as well, too. This is one of the reasons the time fluctuation is present. Thank you. Do you have any, like, mm, advice for me for, from the sensing of my energy more than what I was, would be aware of and, and ask them? I, I would like you to like scan me and then tell tell me more about myself. Can you? Yes. All right. We will do this for you. We when we look into your field, one of the primary things we are seeing is a strong desire to expand, a strong desire to be able to take much of what you're doing now, but multiply it in a way where you're able to share it with more people understanding that this is a natural step within your own progression. This is reflective, again, of the seasonal energy you are moving into as you are moving into a solstice season. In that way, for many parts of your earth, people are beginning to embody the energy of what is known as the summertime, the idea of summer being an expansive time, a time to come together, a time to unify, a time to have more fun understanding that there is a blossoming within you that is reflective of this type of expansive energy. And if you are allowing for yourself to dive into this, you will find right now you will be very supported in expanding yourself in new directions. We see a few projects of yours that you could begin to expand upon should you engage this type of energy, which again, is highly supported by the flow of the now. That's great. Thank you. Of course. Well, now, since this is going to be shared with everyone, is there um, something you would wish to, I don't know how many people will see it, but mm, just say to those people who will see it. Yes, I understand that very soon, we will be doing a new transmission that will be based around accessing the natural power, the natural abilities that your physical and energetic bodies have. We are titling this event, How to Be Your Own Natural Self. We are going to be assisting our species in understanding all of the different parts of their journey whether it be something seasonal, whether it be something day-to-day, -day, cyclical, that provides opportunities for people to tap more intensely into their own natural energies so that they can better create their reality through harmonizing their consciousness with the health of their physical bodies by exposing the physical bodies to natural substances and to different protocols that can assist the body in functioning optimally and understanding how to use things such as eating food, such as breathing, such as observing the seasons around you to open up portals that can allow for you to then shift more fluidly into the reality experiences you prefer because we view this ability to shift reality and open portals to be an aspect of the natural state of all people on your world. And this upcoming transmission will be based around teaching those in your reality how to use their bodies, their lifestyles, and their environments in a way that can assist them in doing this type of shifting. Wonderful. So in, you see a bright future for us. Does this summer energy is, is it available to everyone? Yes, it is affecting enough of your collective consciousness where it is very accessible for a variety of different people of your civilization to very easily tune into. Yes. In a recent session, Bashar mentioned that uh, if nothing changes in uh, 2020, um, meaning the political situation, uh, the probability of 
open contact might be erased completely. I, I perceive that as, as like an inducing fear. I believe it might serve the purpose. But I don't trust that. <laughs> I don't believe that. I don't. I don't believe that. Uh, that it is really so. That we are. It, it is just provocation for us to to it's really turn. Provocation yeah. for you to be more inspired to then act more consciously in shaping your government systems because that is the type of action that's actually required. Understanding that enough of your collective consciousness has shifted its energy to become positive, where the last. Thing in your collective realities that require the shifting is your governments. Enough of your collective consciousness has changed where the only true major thing left for you to shift is now your governments. Understanding that in terms of your politics, in terms of your elections, it does not matter who wins. Not to say that some candidates are all the same or some are better than worse than one another, but the reason that instruction was given of the importance of voting, of the importance of initiating this change in your system is the symbolism of those people in your reality who feel inspired to create a better earth to simply vote. It does not need to be for a specific candidate, although picking one who represents your passion, joy, and excitement would be ideal. The action of voting, the action of participation in your governments is a symbolic representation of you sending all of your positive energy, all of the momentum you have built into your governments. And because your governments are so connected to each of you through all of its different extensions into your lives, that collective energy when placed into the government will then broadcast back into your collective. It is essentially a gateway. The election points are gateways. That is how your dreaming mind is symbolically utilizing these global events. Understanding your full moon, your summer solstice, all of this is a gateway energy. Your political events are right now also gateway energies. Many portals, many powerful multidimensional gateways are opening up right now because you are all essentially at the blast off point. You are at the point where all of your momentum is coming together and crystallizing. So you can then solidify the version of Earth you then prefer to be on. And as a result, you are going through many portals, many jumps. So many collective events, such as elections, such as cyclical celestial events like full moons or new moons, all of these things right now have enhanced portal energy. Because the election is coming up during this time, it will also function like a portal. This is one of the reasons there is so much emphasis placed in the idea of participation. So enough positive energy can then affect that portal for your collective. So you can all collectively, more fluidly, shift into the reality experience you then prefer. Yes, thank you for that answer. Of course, you are quite welcome. Um, that brings question to me. If I feel like I, I would... I perceive there is a possibility of of a negative outcome. Uh, for until now, I was kind of holding myself back or trying to stop myself um, from sharing the negative uh, possibility and uh, focusing only on the positive possibility. How would I discern when it is appropriate for me to? let it out that it might happen this way even though i don't believe it's really going that way remember it is never not appropriate to say what is going on within you if you find you are exploring the negative outcome as a concept you can always share it you can always talk about it it does not mean you're feeding it it does not mean you're increasing its probability of manifestation the only thing that increases the negative reality's probability of manifestation is you feeding that reality with negative energy. That is what ensures that it then comes to fruition. But for you to just voice these topics out loud, to share them with others so you can dissect them and take them apart and understand their mechanics is just helping you to better understand 
how you're creating reality. And there is nothing about that that will attract a negative reality. So remember, as long as you're not feeding it with negative emotions, you are not affecting the probability of it increasing or not increasing. When you embrace that with love or with curiosity or with excitement and exploration, you are actually decreasing its probability because you are showing yourself, oh, look, I can handle this negative idea. It's not consuming me. Look at how much power I have. I can share this negative idea in a way that's not spreading negative energy. I can just share it in a way where I can explore it with people. Oh, look, it's actually harmless. And that is the benefit of sharing these ideas. You get to prove to yourself that they are just ideas and an idea cannot hurt you. Only you can hurt yourself utilizing an idea by crafting it in a negative way, then yielding a negative effect, producing the experience, the illusion of them being hurt. I see. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it, it kind of, no, no, the perception of, of negativity is, is for me much, much softer and much lighter. I just, I just let, let it be even through me and, and I will be okay with it. Yeah. And this is your way of knowing your progress in the transcendence of these negative belief systems and negative versions of Earth. The fact you can look at them and say, oh, that thing that used to weigh a ton now only weighs a couple ounces, hardly anything. And you then have the ability to transform anything within it that's needed to then be transformed with much greater ease because you see it's so light, there's less resistance. It's like lifting weights and you're used to lifting 100 pounds. And now you're being faced with, again, the negative energy, but it's appearing as a five pound weight. You still notice it, it's still there, but you can lift it up and say, huh, I guess I can deal with this thing now because it hardly weighs anything. There's no resistance. I see. Yes, yes. Another thing that comes to my mind is when I started long ago watching Bashar, the energy um, seemed to um, why well, uh, yeah actually my question is this Bashar is loud and um, you know, to us here in, in Czech Republic even Americans are quite quite loud and uh, we are kind of like dimming ourselves down and we're always saying like, oh, no, we don't have to scream. No, we don't have to be so loud. But kids are loud, you know. So how how can I deal with it in um, like not, not judging it when someone is loud and also allowing myself to be loud when, when I can and and uh, also finding, also not not uh, hurting people around me by by you know being too loud or not, not disturbing well, people remember, around me. You'll never hurt them by being too loud. Yes, that's why I said it that way. I know I'm not hurting them if they don't choose so, but uh, remember, yes, sometimes they choose it. It's up to you if you wish to express yourself in that way. Again, understanding these are cultural differences, typically. Understanding that certain cultures emphasize the use of volume as an extension of the feeling of passion, whether it's positive or negative expressions of passion, being passionate about their negativity. Many of these people will then become voluminous about whatever it is they're experiencing. Other people will become passionate about positivity, and they will then, with volume, express whatever the experience is. And understanding these are cultural differences in some ways, and again, it is also the idea of age-based differences because many children are brought up in this passionate expressiveness as part of their own natural upbringing of discovering how to communicate. And again, understanding that it's up to you to gravitate to whatever manner of speech you prefer. If you wish to use volume and you feel somewhat inspired to do so, we would always encourage that you follow that excitement. 
And you may find it will open different doors for you because when you utilize volume and you project your voice, you are utilizing different energy centers within the body that are then triggered by the different acoustic sound-based mechanisms native to your body. And when you utilize the volume to project the voice, you engage the physical and energy body in a unique way that allows for a much more direct effect from the words you are speaking to then impact the person. Many people do not enjoy this, and that is why there are many cultures that do not emphasize using volume. They like to speak softly, but those effects from the voice are still present even when beings speak softly. They are just much more subtle, and they hit different centers. When the voice is soft, and when you are speaking like this, you are in many ways helping to calm people down. That is one of the benefits of speaking softly. It helps to relax the system of that who is speaking it and the one who is receiving it. But you are still utilizing the energy centers of the body to transfer information. But when you utilize your voice like this, what ends up happening is you are using much more of the lower energy centers to then create sound-based auditory power that is then transferred to the other person when you use the voice in this way to induce a more full body effect. So the volume quality of speech will affect different energy centers and can have different effects altogether. I see. Uh, yes, that uh, kind of logic like, answers it. Mm, why shouldn't I be, or I don't have to hold myself back, but still, uh, can you help me to let go of the fear of being too loud and uh, what, what, mm, what my girlfriend think about me being too loud? <laughs> well, that's a great place to start. What will she think about you? Or rather, what do you fear she might think about you? Yes, uh, she, uh, I believe this is coming from um, not only the, the how she was raised and um, in the belief that loud people are aggressive or something, or that being loud is aggressive. Probably yes, but uh, also uh, the things that I'm saying when I'm loud. They are usually like the the strong resonating truth for me, and uh, and it's sometimes too far fetched for for her, and because I'm um, she's she's more like pragmatic. She's living more. Um, we would say 3D life <laughs> and uh, she's not uh, attracted too much in these things and often ju judges them but also she had experiences of of uh, even channeling uh, being channeled too so she has to deny all these experiences when she ju judges that she know what she still does so then how is it connected to my fear? Well, it I, sounds like you have an insecurity about her judging you based on the information and what you're saying because she may view it as lesser than or not worthy of expression. And then what will she think of me if I am saying something that she deems not worthy of expression? Well, she would, she would um, either trust that you... Um, are who, who we claim you are and um, and he, she would uh, then look at Tyler and see if Tyler is moving like naturally or not naturally but if it's he she even commented on on uh, your channel in Ken through Tyler and she said uh, he really seems like he's being manipulated with like like a robot figure talking about Tyler like there there is some uh, someone controlling him and um, 
but when I'm doing strange movements, then uh, prob probably she uh, she's not able to uh, like look from the distances. Uh, she she identifies with it too much too, and uh, she, she thinks about what others would say, uh, even though they are not here or uh, they are imaginary. They, she still keeps it uh, to be very important to to mm, not stick stick out or not not be seen like doing strange things yes and understand that this is her right to be able to do so she has the freedom to allow for this to be how she organizes her thought processes and her perceptions and projections of reality but remember what it comes down to is what do you want for yourself? Now, when you're around her, you can always respect her boundaries, her comfort zones. But remember, there's nothing wrong if you choose to challenge them in a way that is, of course, respectful and done out of joy and passion. Because that's what we all do with one another, yes? We push each other a little bit more in specific directions to help one another to grow. So there is nothing wrong with pushing the envelope just a little bit, testing the waters. And if it stirs up a challenge, if it stirs up what you call potentially a conflict in the moment, then you are at a growing point between the two of you. And it can be then used positively. This is why it is always okay to express yourself in whatever way is most authentic for you. Because if it is challenged or is interpreted negatively by another person, that then is an opportunity for you to then dive into whatever this tension is between yourself and the other person. So you both can come to a deeper understanding of what your current status in the relationship is, as well as how to help one another transform and grow. So it is always okay and appropriate to challenge the comfort zones of people as long as it is done in a way that is respectful of their wishes, their boundaries, their autonomy, and is of course based in your own passion, joy, and excitement. Yes, great. That was a comprehensive answer to that. And thank you. Mm. I don't have any more questions now. All right. So is there something else you would wish to say? Yes. At this moment, we will give a new concept for you to play around with, to understand more deeply about the concept of negative belief systems. So you can go to a new level within your own being of transformation of what you call the negative core beliefs. We will keep this brief. We understand you'll be able to use it quite well, and we will answer any questions you may have about it. But understanding the idea that you are at a point within your development where enough of your society and yourself individually have let go of enough core beliefs of negativity, where you are now able to access what is known as an ultimate core belief. Please understand that the ultimate core belief is essentially the foundation that then lesser core beliefs come from, where again, the more trivial, superficial negative belief systems are then built upon. When you let go of enough of the core beliefs, you are then able to see their framework, the unifying, what you could call ultimate core belief that the core ones stem from. When you get to this level, this is where you are essentially picking up the foundation of what you call the negative belief system generation mechanism. That is what the ultimate core belief represents. When you release that, you are releasing an entire mechanism that generates negative energy. It generates negative points of view. This is a new point in psychological development for your society. If you can allow for yourself to investigate, well, what is the ultimate core belief that I have about this issue, that I have about this subject? What is its ultimate core? You will find you'll be able to receive the answer. When you release the ultimate core belief, you will then simultaneously release the 
other core beliefs that are levels above it, that are built upon it. And it can help you to dissolve levels of negative belief systems within you while just investigating essentially one belief, which is again, the ultimate core belief. Should you find that multiple negative belief system constructs will automatically begin to crumble. And we wish to give this to you right now as a tool for you to be able to use in your reality in whatever way, shape or form you prefer. Great, thanks. Of course. I'm using it while you're speaking or attempting to. And um, I'm asking myself what is the core belief behind uh, the things that I'm not transforming in myself, that I know I could transform, I could relieve, and um, I'm still creating it as pain, interpreting it as pain or uncomfort. All right. And yes, understanding that by investigating, what is this ultimate core belief that I have about my pain? Why I have pain, why I create pain for myself. What is the ultimate core belief that creates this? You will find the answer will come up very automatically because these ultimate core beliefs are asking to be let go of because enough of your society has decided to shift to a positive point of view. And as a result, you are much more easily able to let go of these negative psychological concepts that create negative belief systems. I perceive that the negative belief might be that I'm some, somehow not supposed to, not supposed to heal myself. And as not? it is quite nonsensical. Yes. It makes no sense. And that is, again, the recognition that it is false. It is inherently not true. And as a result, you no longer are using it just by the virtue of its discovery. Yes. Great. Yes. yes. As we were talking in the beginning of the channel about... Um, my uh, that I'm not willing to love myself enough actually to, to have the will to transform it. So uh, perhaps that what would work for me if I imagined myself as someone else and uh, approach myself like from the distance or from as another as Precisely. another consciousness. Precisely. And this is actually, well, may, this may seem like an imaginative exercise, but that is actually more realistic, more similar to how your being actually functions. You are many different people. The you, your ego, your character in that way is another you. The observer the awareness, the consciousness driving that you is its own person. That's why they can be out of sync. That is why your physical ego can get out of sync with your spirit because they're two different beings. You have to sync the ego up to match the physical. So when you look at yourself as another being and then say, oh, I'm going to treat myself as if I were my own best friend, as if I were someone I wanted to help, you're actually shifting your consciousness from the ego to that soulful point of view where you get to see yourself as different people. And you then can create that experience of helping another, of building another person up, of giving another person guidance, of helping to change another person's life in a positive way and direct all of that same energy towards how you treat yourself. Thank you. Yes, and um, it's working magically. It's it's still not where I would wish it to be, but I, I perceive that it's, it it is, is this just, really helped me. It is just as it needs to be. Understand the more you apply it, the more integrated it will become, and the more it will become the rocket fuel to propel you in your quantum leaping you will be taking within this next two month period as your whole society 
this beginning will be arranged in a very unique way. And these types of tools will assist you in being the version of you that you prefer to be. So as you go through these societal changes, these collective changes, you will be in the state of being you most prefer to be in because you will be able to see yourself as another self. And you will be able to then create generosity and the desire to support this other self, allowing for you to be generous and kind to your ego, your character, and more inclined to then support this aspect of you. Great, great. Yes, thank you. Of course, of course. As always, it is our pleasure to be able to interact with you. Our society cherishes these moments we have together. And we look forward to many more conversations in your future where we can dive more deeply in to all of these ideas and many more. Our unconditional love to each of you. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, yeah. <laughs>